Welcome to the Irish Standard Time channel. This is the Omega Speedmaster X33 Skywalker and as you can see on the back it is used uh, by the European Space Agency and it is tested and qualified by the European Space Agency, the ESA, uh, and used for uh, astronauts um, from the ESA as well as cosmonauts uh, from Roscosmos um, to uh, generally fly to the International Space Station. NASA astronauts or anyone taking off from US soil is generally given the previous version of this watch, also called the Gen 2. I got this watch about a year ago. Um, I obviously set the watch on the day I got it and I have not changed the time since. Um, it is after um, a year, well, six days short of a year, uh, it is uh, running eight seconds fast. And that's quite a, quite a feat for the thermocompensated quartz movement that's in this watch. This video is an update of a video that I recorded about a year ago when I got the watch, hopefully in slightly better quality. It's a relatively complex watch. There is a lot going on. We've got uh, five buttons. Uh, four buttons and a crown, but the crown essentially acts as a button as well. Um, the crown's used to go through the menus. Um, the, the buttons on the left and right are kind of standard chrono buttons, um, but also used for other functions. The top left button is actually a um, shortcut button, and the bottom left button is used uh, to change uh, the settings. So let me walk through uh, the scenario that um, I'll be setting up on the watch today. Um, I'm taking a flight from Brussels back to Dublin. Um, to do that with this watch, I'm going to have to set up six different uh, pieces. First of all, I'm going to set up uh, my T1 as Brussels time, my T2 as Dublin time. I'm going to set my mission elapsed time to start at 7 o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow morning when my flight departs, um, I'm going to be at the airport an hour and a half before the flight. That's my PE1. My PE2, my phase of lapse 2, is going to be my arrival time in Dublin, 7.50 a.m. And I'm going to set the alarm for 5 a.m. local time in Brussels so that I get up on time. So let's get started. I've got my UTC set up to, to GMT, which is what it's supposed to be. I, my T1 is generally the time zone that I'm in uh, right now. Um, so let me set that to, to the correct time, Brussels time, uh, in, this, uh, in this instance. Generally, to change any um, of the menus or settings, you uh, press and hold the bottom left button for about two seconds. Then you're using the buttons on the right-hand side to go up and down. Um, you can see um, I have the little plus at the top, and Brussels time during the summer is two hours ahead of UTC or, or GMT. Obviously, in the winter, it's only one hour ahead. Dublin time is one hour ahead in, of GMT UTC in the summer, and it is equal to UTC slash GMT during the winter time. So I've got my Dublin, uh, I've got my Brussels time set up. I click the bottom left button to go out of the edit uh, menu. Um, I then click the crown just once uh, to move on to T2. So this is supposed to be my Dublin time. Uh, currently, it is set up to East Coast time. You can see the minus at the top, minus five hours. So that's that's East Coast time. Um, I will change that to plus one hour. And there we go. I have a Dublin time set up. I exit the edit menu by just a little click on the bottom left. So I've got my uh, two time zones set up. Uh, next, uh, I will go on to MET. MET is mission elapsed time. Obviously crucial for astronaut and cosmonauts. It essentially counts up or down from a specific uh, point in time. That point in time is usually the time your, your rocket lifts off. In this case, it's not as exciting as the time my flight uh, takes off. I can set um, the MET in relation to either UTC, T1 or T2, so it always uses a reference time. In this case, uh, my flight is uh, leaving at um, it is leaving at 7 a.m. Brussels time, uh, so I'll use T1, which is Brussels. Um, I will then uh, click the crown to move on to the year. It's 2020. Uh, August is correct as well, so I'm going to move on to the day. And I will change that to the 13th of August, which is tomorrow. Um, so my, my date set, I move on to, to the hour and I keep going. So essentially set up the exact uh, date and time where my MET mission elapsed time will uh, start. Skipping ahead a little here, I just want to show you a little quirk. As you can see, I went through 7.59 to 8 o'clock. It's something that's a little bit special about this um, about this watch. So uh, even though you're changing the minutes, 
um, the, the watch will also keep in mind what hour you're on. So if you're going from 7.59, it doesn't switch back to 7.00, but it actually switches back to 8 o'clock. Just a, a little quirk I want to make you aware of uh, for this watch. So I'm going to go back here uh, downwards so I don't have to go all the way uh, through the menu to get back to the, the hours uh, section. So there we go. I've got uh, my flight departure time set up, 13th of August, uh, 7 a.m. Um, a quick uh, tap on the bottom left button uh, to set that up. And you can now see we've got minus here. So we're 14 hours and 47 minutes away from my flight departing. Quick explanation here. Um, the Skywalker comes with essentially two sets of menus. Um, to move through the first menu, I just press the crown Oh, the first set of menus, I press the crown quickly. You can see UTC, T1, um, I couldn't go on to T2. I see mission elapsed time, and then I will pop on to my chrono. Uh, the chrono works very simply, top, top button start stop, uh, bottom button reset, and I also have a timer set to five minutes. Again, it start stop at the top and reset. And I go back to UTC then uh, through that first set of menus. To access the second set of menus, I press and hold the crown for about two seconds. Uh, this set of menus will show me uh, three alarms, alarm one, alarm two, and alarm three. Here we go. Uh, and it also shows me phase elapsed time one, two, and three. So next I'm going to set up phase elapsed time one. I will use uh, PE1 as uh, the arrival time at the airport. So I want to be at the airport an hour and 30 minutes before my flight departs. Um, that will give me plenty of time to get to the gates. And phase elapsed times, um, so PE1, 2 and 3, work a little differently from MET. Generally, they're set up with reference to MET as opposed to T1, T2 or UTC. I mean, you could set them up at a specific point of time in the future using uh, T1, T2 or, or UTC um, as that reference time. But generally, you're using the mission elapsed time uh, to set up uh, against. So what we're saying is that a certain event will take place a certain amount of time either before um, or after the mission has started. Um, and uh, that's important to watch out for as well when you're setting this up. So at the top here, you will see the minus um, or you will see the plus um, if the event is happening after um, the mission uh, per se has, has started. So you can see you just go up to, to get a plus there and you go down again uh, to get the minus. In this case, um, this specific phase is going to start an hour and a half before my flight starts. So I want to be at the airport an hour and a half before my flight uh, departs. To set it up, it's the same than uh, the other uh, bits that we've already set up. So it's up and down uh, essentially. And uh, I'm going an hour and 30 minutes, uh, an hour and 30 minutes before my flight takes off. So there we go. Um, I've got 13 hours, 14 minutes and 30 seconds uh, to get to the airport on time. So I've got my uh, arrival time at the airport set up. Now um, let's actually um, set up the flight arrival time. For that, I'm going to use PE2 and I'll show you the other example here. So I'm going to set up uh, phase elapsed time two, um, not uh, with relev reference to, uh, T, uh, to MET, but I'm going to set it up with reference to T2, which is my Dublin time. And my flight is going to land tomorrow, the 13th uh, of August, um, at 7.50 uh, a.m. Uh, local time in Dublin. Um, so reference time for local time in Dublin is T2. Uh, and uh, again, set it up the same way as I did uh, the other um, the other times. Um, so I'm gonna go to eight o'clock and then 10 minutes before um, using that little, little quirk I showed you before to, to save myself a couple of seconds. And that's it. Um, I've got my PE2 set up. I now know that my flight is landing in Dublin in 16 hours and 13 and a half minutes. So last thing I want to do is I'm going to set up my alarm. I'm staying at the hotel just across from the airport in Brussels. Um, so I only need 30 minutes or so to get up and, and get to the airport. Um, so once again, I'm going to use T1 as a reference time, my local time uh, in, in Brussels. Um, now, uh, I can set the alarm uh, up straight without setting a year, date and, and, and a minute, uh, sorry, a year and, and day. Um, but um, I'd rather not do that because that means it's going to go every day. And I certainly don't get up at 5 a.m. every day. So I will make this a once off alarm by setting a, uh, a date um, to this alarm. And there we go. So I have a once off alarm set up for 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. When you change an alarm, it will automatically switch itself on as well. So quite nice, uh, so you don't forget to switch it on.
So that's it. Um, I've set up uh, my T1 as uh, Brussels local time. I've set up my T2 as Dublin local time. I've set up my uh, flight departure time in 14 hours and 42 minutes. Um, and then going to the second set of menus, getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning. I need to be at the airport in 13 hours and uh, 12 minutes. Uh, and I will be landing in Dublin in roughly um, 16 hours and 32 minutes. One quick note here, the hands on the watch always show you time zone one. So if you're usually, like I often do, adjust your watch to the time zone that you'll be landing in during your flight, and then also adjust T2 to show maybe a different time zone, this will of course mess up your P1, PE1 and your PE2 um, that are set up with reference to those two time zones. So to avoid that, um, you could of course use UTC as a reference time, all you need to do is convert your departure and arrival time to UTC. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I hope that was all clear. I hope it was a little bit better quality than the video I recorded um, last year. Um, if there's any questions, please use the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please, please uh, like and of course, if you are so inclined, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.